In the abyssal dark of a young planet, untouched by sun or storm, life takes its first uncertain breath. No forests, no fish, no war or peace, only cells, drifting blindly through chemical tides drawn by heat and hunger. This is Abyssal Genesis, a real-time evolution simulation where we trace the invisible history of life, not in leaps but in increments. Through frozen moments in time, we witness a silent struggle for survival and the first sparks of change that will one day shape everything. What you are seeing is not a microscope slide, and it is not pre-rendered animation. This is a living, breathing simulation calculated in real time on a graphics card. A primordial ocean born of code where fluid physics, chemical diffusion, and evolution all play out in unison. No scripts, no hand-designed creatures, only emergence. To the west lie jagged rocks, fractured terrain scoured by relentless currents. Water rushes through narrow channels, flushing out everything in its path. To the east, a vast gyre, a swirling vortex of fast-moving fluid. It is not calm, but it is contained. In this finite world, what is flushed out is not lost. The swirl captures it, spinning life endlessly in its grasp. At the dawn of this world, dozens of cells appear. Each carries a strand of randomly generated DNA, raw digital code untouched by design. But 99% of it is garbage, broken instructions, useless mutations. Most cells perish within moments, unable to feed, unable to divide. Yet by chance, a few bear the right traits, a single organelle that can digest gas bubbles and just enough genetic logic to make a copy of themselves. In these early days, that is all they need. There is no competition, no predators, only food and space to drift. And so it is in the swirl that life takes hold. The fast-moving current spins cells through nutrient-rich zones again and again. Feeding becomes effortless. Motion itself does the work. Here, without intent or intelligence, life begins to flourish. Cells divide, populations expand, and the seeds of evolution take root. Every living thing that will come after can trace its ancestry to this first swirling storm of life. But not all parts of this world are so fertile. In the rocks, the story is one of failure. Heavy currents strip the surface bare. Cells get flushed out before they ever had a chance. Only the dead bodies of failed evolutionary experiments remain. In the safety of the swirling current, life does what life always does. It multiplies. Within minutes, the population explodes. Over 20,000 cells now drew this artificial ocean, a teeming, chaotic bloom of early biology. Each division is a roll of the dice, a chance for error or innovation, mutations. Most are trivial, harmless. Some are fatal. But a few, a precious few, bring change. Among the swirl, a new lineage appears. Cells that no longer drift blindly. Cells with control. They have grown a flagellum, a tail-like organelle allowing them to swim, and not just anywhere, but upcurrent toward the richest pockets of gas. For the first time, the environment is not simply endured. It is exploited. Elsewhere, another strategy takes root. The swirling waters, now dense with life, are also thick with death. Countless bodies, the failed, the unfit, drift among the living, and some cells evolve the means to devour them. These scavengers gain access to a second source of energy, not just the gas bubbles, but the biomass of the fallen. Compared to their simpler cousins, these dual feeders divide more often and live longer. It is a quiet revolution, and it is decisive. With this, the first great divergence is complete. From randomness has emerged difference, from difference, advantage, and from advantage, evolution. For a time, the swirl was paradise, a bounty of food delivered by the current with no predators and no resistance. But nature abhors abundance, and in time, even here, the feast begins to dwindle. As new species arise, so too does competition. Cells now fight, passively but relentlessly, for the same dwindling bubbles. Niches within the swirl begin to saturate, each space, each strategy, is contested. 
there is no longer enough for all. Yet just beyond the edge of this comfort lies an untapped bounty. In the shadowed canyons of the western rocks, gas bubbles still rise in abundance, unclaimed, untouched. But they are guarded by force. Here, the current is a gale, a torrent strong enough to strip away even the most agile swimmer. Until now. A new kind of cell emerges, smaller, lighter, more efficient. Where a flagellum once pushed a large body slowly, it now drives these featherweights with startling speed. They race into the current, defying the flow, each movement calculated, each division a risk. They are not generalists, they are specialists, engineered by evolution for a single task, to go upstream. And as they climb the current, they divide, leaving behind a living thread of pioneers. Before our eyes, a new territory is being claimed, not by conquest, but by adaptation. What was once sterile, now stirs with life. Evolution, once confined to the swirl, is breaking boundaries, conquering terrain once thought inhospitable, proving once again that in nature, challenge is opportunity. When we imagine evolution, we often picture a ladder, each step more complex, the plank more refined, more advanced than the last. But in reality, nature does not climb, it sprawls. It searches, not for sophistication, but for sufficiency. The first wave of swimmers were pioneers, built for speed, for resistance, for challenge. But once the currents were breached and the pockets behind them made safe, the need for speed faded. Between the narrow passages of the rock lie quieter eddies, places where the current softens and the chaos calms. In these tranquil hollows, a different kind of cell begins to thrive. The tiny bodies that once raced upstream now struggle in this new context. Their size, once an asset, becomes a flaw. Larger cells, slower but wider, collide with more gas bubbles. More collisions means more food. More food, more divisions. Some reduce the energy they spend on motion. Others abandon swimming altogether. Flagella disappear. Metabolic tools are dropped. Even the ability to digest dead cells, once a powerful adaptation, is cast aside by some lineages. In these safe, slow waters, complexity offers no advantage. Simplicity becomes the winning strategy. Here, evolution does not climb forward. It folds back, shedding what is no longer needed, pruning itself into elegance. There is no single direction to evolution, only adaptation. And in these quiet corners, the past becomes the future, not through progress, but through persistence. In the beginning, the world shaped life. Now, for the first time, life begins to shape the world. In this simulation, there exist 26 types of biomaterials, inert particles that cells can create, given the right internal machinery. At first, their production is accidental, the result of random mutations, not intention. Cells fabricate these particles without strategy, without purpose, like the primitive builders of ancient stromatolites. Each biomaterial obeys its own rules. Some connect with others, some latch onto rocks, some trap gas bubbles or cling to drifting corpses. Individually, they are harmless, but collectively, they begin to accumulate. In the narrow throats of the rock formations, these particles pile up. Layer by layer, they clog the openings. The water, once a torrent, is slowed to a trickle. Flow collapses, gas currents falter, entire regions, once rich in nutrients, grow still. In some places, plugging is complete, choking off gas flows entirely. Elsewhere, partial blockages create constricted channels where the same volume of fluid forced through a tighter space accelerates to new speeds. The world becomes less predictable, more varied, more alive. Sometimes, chance intervenes again. A rare cell evolves the ability to dismantle these barriers, breaking down the obstacles for its own gain, reopening passageways, reshaping currents once more. With every new buildup, with every breach, the environment downstream is rewritten. Food flows shift, currents change, life adapts anew. Here in this simulated abyss, life is not just surviving, it is engineering. 
The first crude terraformers are not mighty beasts or thinking minds, but the simplest of cells, drifting on currents of chance. Terraforming began without design, just cells spilling inert particles into the flow. But with time, their aimless actions carved borders across the world. The simulation's once simple geography, a rock-lined west and a swirling east, is no longer intact. Thick, layered walls of biomaterial seal off entire sections of the world. Three new micro-worlds emerge, isolated, diverging, evolving alone. In the depths of one cavity, cells discover a new way to survive, living within the biomaterial itself. Feeding on gas bubble generators entombed in this soft, shifting substrate, they become burrowers, not swimmers. Between two biomaterial barriers, a narrow river of current remains. It flows faster than ever before, compressed by the walls on either side, a supercurrent slicing through stillness. In the far northwest, a small capsule forms, a refuge of sorts. Here, flagellates dominate, streamlined and efficient, gliding through low competition waters like fish in a clear pond. And yet, the swirl remains, chaotic, competitive, crowded beyond imagination. Here, only the strongest survive. In this crucible, evolution has armed its champions. Thickened cell walls protect against predation. Jagged spikes impale anything swept in from gentler realms. Some species abandon weaponry, but none dare abandon armor. The swirl, birthplace of life in this world, has become its battlefield. A place where survival is war, and only the best adapted strategies endure. At the edge of the narrowed river, where current meets calm, something new takes hold. Rooted in the biomaterial, a strange life form emerges. It does not drift or swim, it stays. These cells remain attached, connected by fragile bonds. Each cell is armored in thick walls, bristling with spikes. They consume whatever the current delivers, gas, corpses, prey. Like a tower of mouths, they grow upward, feeding as they go. But their bonds are brittle. As they reach higher, the upper branches tear loose, scattered into the torrent. In this crude way, a new strategy is born, the first multicellular filter feeder. It is not intelligent, it is not stable. But it is different. Will this complex new design conquer the world or collapse under the pressure to stay simple? In evolution, nothing is promised, only change. This world, like the life it holds, is still evolving. You can explore it yourself. Evil Life is now available on Steam in early access. Download the Abyssal Genesis save files from this documentary and watch evolution unfold with your own eyes. Shape it, study it, or just let it run. Because even here, in digital oceans, life always finds a way.